almost exactly two years since I stood before you to announce that South Africa would be entering a nationwide lockdown to contain the spread of COVID-19 virus. This was a drastic and unprecedented measure, but it helped to slow the spread of the virus so that our health facilities and indeed our society could have time to prepare for the anticipated surge in infections. Since then, we have had to adjust our response as the pandemic has changed, as infections have risen and fallen, and as our health facilities have come under enormous pressure. For two years, our lives have been shaped by this pandemic. South Africa has had more than 3.7 million cases and has recorded nearly 100,000 COVID-19 deaths. The pandemic has changed the way we work, the way we travel, the way we worship and socialize, the way we play and watch sport. It has shattered many livelihoods and devastated our economy leading to the closure of many businesses and the loss of some two million jobs. Yet it has also shown South Africans to be a caring and compassionate people, coming to each other's assistance at the hour of the greatest need. When we were called upon to observe restrictions on movement, gatherings and various activities, as South Africans, we did so, knowing that it is for the sake of our health and lives and the good of the country. Over the past two years, we have taken unprecedented actions to strengthen our health system. We hired more people to deal with the pandemic, built more hospital and laboratory capacity, and ensured that COVID patients are well cared for in our hospitals. We are now at a watershed moment. We are now ready to enter a new phase in our management of the pandemic. After four waves of infection, fewer people are becoming severely ill and requiring hospitalization. There are fewer deaths than before. Our scientists tell us that this is mainly because some 60 to 80 percent of the population has some form of immunity to the virus, either from previous infection or vaccinations. From the experience of the past two years, our health services have learned to manage the disease more effectively. We have gotten used to wearing masks and washing our hands regularly. Most importantly, 48% of all adults have received at least one vaccine dose. We therefore enter the third year of this pandemic more hopeful than ever before. While the pandemic is not yet over, and while we remain cautious we see many parts of our daily life returning to normal. We see our economy returning to full operation. We feel the fear and despair of the last two years lifting from our shoulders. Due to the changing nature of the pandemic and due to the progress that has been made through our collective efforts we intend to lift the national state of disaster as soon as public comment on the health regulations published by the Minister of Health have been completed. These regulations, when finalized, will replace the state of disaster regulations as the legal instrument that we use to manage the pandemic. All South Africans are invited to make comments on the draft regulations before the 16th of April, 2022. 
What should be clear, though, is that the end of the national state of disaster will not mean the end and does not mean the end of the pandemic. It just means that we are changing the way we manage the pandemic and we will be relying on health regulations rather than disaster management regulations. It means that we are learning to live with the virus in our presence. It means that we are returning as far as possible to the lives that we lived before the pandemic due to the relaxation of many of the restrictions. It means that we are opening our economy still further and that we are resuming many of the social and cultural activities that we have missed over the last two years. Since October last year, the country has been at adjusted level one, which has meant that many normal activities have resumed with health gu guidelines followed at all times. Most of the restrictions on the economic activity have been lifted. We are now able to ease the restrictions even further. In deciding which restrictions to ease and which to keep in place, we are obviously guided, as before, by the advice of the Ministerial Advisory Committee on COVID-19, which, as you recall, is composed of medical people, scientists, and what have you. We've also looked to the experiences of other countries, for we learn a great deal for, from other countries as they manage the pandemic, including those countries where the complete lifting of restrictions has been followed by a surge, a rise in infections and deaths. We study these countries and what they are doing to better inform our own response. Knowing that we have to enter a new phase in our management of the pandemic, we took time to consult widely with various stakeholders, including religious bodies, sporting organizations, traditional leaders, educationists, and many others. Earlier today, we held a meeting of the Presidential Coordinating Council, which brings together our premiers, our mayors of all metros, ministers, deputy ministers, and representatives of SALGA, the South African Local Government Association, as well as our traditional leaders. Based on those consultations, and the recommendations of the National Coronavirus Command Council, Cabinet has decided to ease several restrictions as part of Adjusted Level 1. The restrictions on gatherings are being significantly changed. In previous regulations, the emphasis was on placing an upper limit on the number of people who could attend a gathering. The approach now going forward is that both indoor and outdoor venues can now take up to 50% of their capacity, provided that the criteria for entrance at those venues is proof of vaccination or a COVID test not older than 72 hours. But where there is no provision for proof of vaccination or a COVID test, then the current upper limit will remain of 1,000 people indoors and 2,000 people outdoors. This change to the restriction on gatherings will be of great benefit to the sporting, cultural, entertainment, and event industries in particular. This means that if we are vaccinated or have recently tested negative, we'll be able to return to watching sports in our stadiums and attending music concerts, 
or events. You'll be able to attend theater performances, conferences, and other events. The maximum number of people permitted at a funeral will increase from 100 to 200. As before, night vigils, after funeral gatherings, and the so-called after tears gatherings are still not allowed. There are also important changes to the regulation on the wearing of masks. As before, it is mandatory to wear a mask or similar covering over the nose and mouth when in public indoor spaces. However, a mask is not required when one is outdoors. This means that we still need to wear masks when in facilities like shops, malls, offices, factories, taxis, buses, trains, or any other indoor place. But we do not need to wear masks when we are walking on the streets of our country or our pathways or in an open space when exercising outdoors or jogging, or when attending an outdoor gathering. The regulations on social distances, distancing are also being changed, requiring that a space of one meter is maintained between persons in all settings except in schools. There are also changes to the regulations on international travel, Travelers entering South Africa will need to show proof of vaccination or a negative PCR test not older than 72 hours. All unvaccinated travelers entering the country who want to be vaccinated will be offered a vaccination. These measures will take effect from tomorrow, Wednesday, the 23rd of March, 2022, once the new regulations are gazetted. With these changes, almost all restrictions on social and economic activity will have been lifted. Going forward, our most important defenses against the disease are, firstly, vaccination, and secondly, the observance of basic measures such as wearing masks indoors. The further easing of the remaining restrictions will require that we increase the rate of vaccination among South Africans. The vaccine has been shown to significantly reduce severe illness. Statistics from our health facilities clearly show that people who are not vaccinated stand a higher chance of being hospitalized or even dying from COVID-19. Vaccination is likely to reduce transmission at home and at places like schools, universities, where there is close contact. Therefore, while we welcome the fact that more than 68% of people older than 60 years in South Africa have been vaccinated, we are concerned that only 35% of people between 18 and 35 years have been vaccinated. It is vitally important that we get many more of our people between 18 and 35 years vaccinated. And it is, that is why we launched the hashtag Kiredi campaign last month. I'm sure that a number of you have already seen this campaign. This campaign includes messages developed by young people and focuses on making the case for people between 18 and 35 years to vaccinate. In addition, we would like to encourage those who are vaccinated to go and receive their booster doses like I did the other day. If we are all vaccinated, we can turn our energy, our resources, and effort 
to rebuilding our economy and creating much needed jobs. Two years ago, as we announced the start of a nationwide lockdown, I said that in the days, weeks and months ahead, our resolve, our resourcefulness and our unity as a nation would be tested as never before. I called on all of us to play our part and said to be courageous, to be patient, and above all, we should show compassion. The people of South Africa have responded to that call time and time and time again. Once more, we are all called upon to play our part, to get vaccinated as we embark with hope and determination on a new era in our fight against this pandemic. I thank you and good night.